Well, it's good to have you here at, with St. Andrews today. Uh, with me, I have some very special people uh, who are going to share a little bit of just about uh, about the summer, about how things are, uh, and and mostly kind of how we're moving through this time together, uh, this time of COVID-19. But before we do that, I want to read a verse of Scripture. It's Romans chapter 12, and it's verse 12, where Paul is writing uh, to the Christians in Rome. And he says, Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Some translations would say, Rejoice in your hope, be patient in tribulation, and be constant in prayer. You know, those things sort of talk about the principles, one part of the principles of, of the Christian life. But the whole idea of rejoicing in our hope, to be patient in our suffering, in our tribulation, and to be constant, or to continue in our prayer, really is a lot about the ministry of these uh, individuals who are with me today. And so, uh, I think you'll kind of get where we're going as we go, and so without trying to make some big introduction, I think we just take off and go right into these, into these things. Uh, I'll just throw out a question here for everyone, and this is just about a conversation. Sometimes we get it right, sometimes we don't. <laughs> Um, in the big scope of things, how are things going this summer? Don't everybody speak at once. My summer has been going very well. There have been some problems, and I've solved them. And I've enjoyed this cool weather that we have alternately. That's it. That's good. Okay. Anybody else? How, how's summer been? It's been very quiet and peaceful at my house. As though it, it is most anyone, any time, but especially when, when I'm not coming and going as frequently as I am accustomed to doing. That's true. Quarantine kind of has a way of uh, narrowing our, tra our travel, okay. doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yeah, that's, that's good. I've missed traveling to out of state, even. That's true. You do. You do get an opportunity to travel a lot. Yeah. It has changed a lot of things like that. Anybody else? Well, well sometimes it's been oh, go very ahead, well, and sometimes it hasn't been very good. And but on the whole, I guess it was okay. Um, still trying to hang in there, mm -hmm. and wish it was over. But we'll wait a little while later, longer, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you were going to say something. Go ahead. Well, we had both good and bad. Uh, the great part was Mel sold his motorcycle. The okay. bad part, he felt it broke his arm. You <laughs> might want to speak up just a little bit more, or lean, lean toward that just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, just a little. So there have been some good and some bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, I think that's pretty, pretty, pretty typical. Uh, and <laughs> more specifically, what you all do, and, and I'll just kind of update people, they are a part of our call tree. And I, I saw early in, uh, in this pandemic, this quarantining, and all of those things, I saw the potential for, for people to really lose touch. And what you see are the, are the folks who are in the background always finding ways to remain in touch. Each of them has some families that they call on a, on a regular basis, and that doesn't mean they don't call some other people, but uh, they, they're really just trying to keep us all connected. And that's not an easy thing. But I am, I am so grateful that we, of this decision that was made to, to really be proactive in how we could reach out. And, and, and thinking in those specifically, you know, well, the call tree is about prayer requests. It's about, it could be joys. It could be just the things that are, are kind of tough. If there's some real big announcement, then they are also a part of our communication, multiple communications. But thinking specifically as your role as a person who works on the call tree, uh, what are the challenges that you have found? Maybe one challenge, you know, you don't, I don't need a laundry list, but, but uh, what, what challenges have you, have you just kind of run into uh, along the way, the tough, the tough parts about that? We'll get to the good stuff, but let's, let's go to the challenges right now. Go ahead. Uh, I believe the hardest thing I've had to do is tell people who truly love this woman 
in our church that she's terminal. That it's just going to be a matter of time. And to listen to their responses, it, it, that was difficult. It is, and, and I will say too that and a lot of people, there have been a lot of losses. And, and our congregation has lost an individual, uh, a dear friend of ours. Uh, it wasn't because of COVID-19. It just, that was the progress. But calls like that are tough. They are. Anybody else? What, what challenges has there been? Go well, ahead. One, one of the hardest things for me is, is to, sh to listen to the difficulties some have had to go through and some have had some really serious health issues in, within their home, uh, how they've had to cope, and uh, some have had some joys with, with the fact that the husband didn't have COVID, and they thought that at that point with, with us, all of his health challenges that that was a possibility, and they were, were immensely relieved. Others had a celebration of marriage in the family, and they personally quarantined it. But it was to listen and to have an idea what they were going through was a challenge for me. Yeah, that, that is tough. <laughs> you feel like a hotline or something maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I know. Anybody else? What, what were some of the challenges? Go ahead. Go ahead. I have experienced, for the first time in my life, going grocery shopping and seeing empty shelves. Wow. Oh, yeah. It's very unusual, and I know the people are doing the best they can, but it's, it's a strange experience. <laughs> That is, that, that, that truly is. Uh, any, anybody else uh, challenges as, as we've kind of kind of wandering through, uh, we're, we're, you know, we're kind of feeling our way through this whole thing. We're, even this recording, we're kind of feeling our way through it, but go ahead. Well, and being, not being able to go when you want to, yes. go where you want to go comfortably. And uh, I guess the biggest challenge I had was the loss of a loved one, although it didn't have to do with the, uh, COVID, the virus. But, and then I, taking better care of my sister. I don't know if it's better care, but more care. She's requiring more care. And, uh, but, and like um, seeing those empty shelves, too. Especially with the disinfecting things, and uh, yeah. and for a while the paper, the toilet tissue, but that seems to be coming back in style. So, just haven't had any. Uh, the people I have spoken with, maybe I, I think they're just doing a marvelous job at adjusting to to daily uh, challenges that they have, and and I, I mean. I just haven't had any challenges whatsoever in speaking with with uh, people, and um, I find it most enjoyable from week to week. And it's just kind of gotten to the point where you really enjoy speaking with them and seeing seeing what it is that they've done from week to week, and and uh, just marvelous people. Well, that's that's probably a really good segue to <laughs> to my next question. Were you reading my script or no. something? Okay, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know we all have challenges. We're all going through these. We're kind of it, it's like we're kind of feeling our way through the dark sometimes. But there are those people, those conversations that that give us inspiration, just like what you were saying there. How just how people are dealing with it. Uh, let's let's you know where have you found inspiration in? In making these calls and in talking with individuals, uh, where have you found the inspiration in some of those things? Well, I've found that I, I've had longer conversations with some that I have <laughs> simply said hi to on Sunday morning. I've not uh, not wow. had a real occasion to, to to really be in conversation because. One of the things I usually sit closer to the front, and they're off onto the back, and and may even disappear before I get 
through there, but uh, some, but I've had just quite interesting conversations, though they're short, but mm -hmm. still, mm -hmm. they, uh, so I don't know whether they'll recognize <laughs> who's calling them <laughs> when they see this program. But. They may be coming, when we all get back together, they may go on around just listening to everybody and see who was calling them, maybe, <laughs> and try to put a face with a, with a sound or something. That's yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. Go ahead. Well, I enjoy talking to the people because I've started talking to family members. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you all weren't on speaking terms before? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I got... They helped me get along too, not just me talking to them, but I enjoyed talking to the people and getting to know them a little bit better. That's good. That That's, is a joy. Yeah, 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 anybody. Go ahead. I have found inspiration in talking to one of our members who is uh, suffering uh, a little right now, a whole lot. Uh, she's very positive and has a very good attitude and it really inspires me. Wow, that's so. Somebody that's going through tough times, and you think you have you has this been your case that you you think, oh man, I, this is going to be a tough call to make because of the other person, mm -hmm. and then by the time the conversation's over, you you think, why didn't I make this call earlier? Because you kind of mm -hmm. walk away feeling better yes. for it. Right. Has that been has that been anybody's home. experience? Right. Yeah. You know, you 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 think we. They are our inspiration mm -hmm. in many ways. That's that's been my experience, I, and I I do my best to let people know that man, you've just made my day, mm -hmm. or you've given me a reason that I I this is why I wake up every morning that I get to have those conversations. Yeah, well, I think you were chomping at the bit there. Would you move a little closer to the microphone just a little bit? It won't hurt you. I, well, it might, Will but it it's it's given its tetanus shots, so it, you'll be all right. <laughs> Oh, I have one gentleman that uh, luckily he's near the end of my list. We've had long chats, but he calls me the church lady. <laughs> At least it's not the old church lady. <laughs> I'm not going to say a thing. Smart man. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but how did how does I mean? So you have these long conversations. Mm -hmm. and, now, did you have those conversations before? No. Wow. Is anybody else, I mean, has that been anybody's experience? Folks that you had, you, you knew, but now you're thinking, oh my. Well, I've had some, I've had some lengthy conversations, and I don't know if this is really a place to share, but one of my frustrations this summer has been the squirrels and my, and my, bird feeder oh, and yes. I've discovered that I can mix red pepper and Vaseline together and grease the poles and they don't they don't really? find the poles and I put red pepper in the in the food and they don't eat the food so they well, might have to try so it's, <laughs> what it's been a relief it does not they do they have, it doesn't hurt the digestion of the birds it well, does, it affects the squirrels, but it doesn't affect the birds. Oh, right. So, but <laughs> that's interesting. That might even be worth the price of admission today. You <laughs> I never know. know that. Yeah, I, I think you were going to say something. I have been I found an inspiration in being able to come back to church. It. I don't think I've ever missed so many Sundays in a row, and it. Even though there aren't very many of us, um, it just it gives me a, a lift. Mm -hmm. To be able to come to church every more, every Sunday and uh, take part in the services. Yeah, yeah. I would agree with that too. And and I know that some of you have begun to come back as we we're going back to in person mm -hmm. worship, a combination of mm -hmm. online and in person. Um, but then some of you are not mm -hmm. because for various reasons, you know. It's just, and that's okay. It's all very good, and and I'm glad that we can all feel comfortable in making those decisions that we make. And I want you to know that I, I support whatever those decisions have been and, and whatever those decisions will be. And so I would want you to know that. Uh, one of the things, of course, you, and as you all are listening on this, 
that they do a lot of calling, and it's about how do you do, how are you doing, and all of those things, and, and asking for prayer requests and, and, and the sort. I want to I want to finish up some of our conversation by just asking, uh, you know, these are our these are our prayer warriors. These are the people who who will get a prayer request and then communicate that and pray for individuals. But there's a question that I think that they deserve, and they deserve it from me, and it is. How could we pray for you as an individual? If there was, not that, not that there's some magic, you know, I'm not a genie or anything like that. It's not about those things. But as you think about, as this, as this continues, um, how, how could people, and this is for those of you who are seeing this now, uh, would want you to, to kind of take mental note on these things because these are things for which you could pray. How could we pray for you? Individually, if you if you had one prayer request, what would it be? Patience. Mm -hmm. I would second that. Patience. Mm -hmm. Okay. Somebody seconded mm -hmm. that motion. Mm -hmm. I know you all are thinking that's okay. I don't think we've ever thought about that before. That, and that's because you're a giving individual, and we we sometimes we give and we give, and I just. How could, how could I pray for you? How could they join in praying for you all? Because you're in the front lines. You just are. My prayer re Well, prayer I would request. like to... Oh. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Go ahead. My prayer request would be for my daughter and her husband who has to go through another round of chemo. Okay. That That's would help me a great deal. Okay. We can do that. Well, I, I guess the fact that I, I would like the opportunity to visit with my family out of state because um, my, as my, my son's taking a new position as far as the assistant to the bishop in Tennessee Conference, I would love to share some time with them. But my granddaughter is in her church in Paducah and my daughter-in-law is in her separate church and they're just a chance to, to go and share those experiences. I That's one of the things I've missed is not okay. that I, no, I just do enjoy that. Okay. I would also like for us to pray for our young people. They really need an education and I'm very concerned about sending them back to school not sending them back to school, but we really somehow, we have to educate our youth. Okay. How else? I like prayers for my family for the next couple weeks that we are able to uh, get through all this. And also, I would pray that that we, I don't think we'll ever be back to normal, but at least be a little bit better than we are right now. Okay. And maybe that, the, I'm sorry, maybe that people will realize this is a serious thing. I don't think some people think it's not very serious and mm -hmm. doesn't, don't do what they should do is why we keep getting more and more cases all the time. As much as we want to get back to normal, sometimes our actions seem to be pushing us farther away from normal for some reason or other, uh, however that is. Well, what I would just say is uh, you've heard their request. It's about request for, for patience. It's a uh, request for, for just being able to see family a little more often. Our prayer request for family over the next couple of weeks that that, that relates to to loss, uh, but also for uh, the youth, and for the education as we get nearer and closer to a school year, uh, and the education that they so desperately need, and and really for us just to find a way to get a little closer to normal. Is there anything else? Anything else? Then let's take this time and um, 
And I would ask you who are, who are watching, uh, from wherever it is that you might be watching, uh, I would ask for you to, to take all of these things and kind of let them soak into your mind and into your heart, uh, and that we would join together. I, there will be a, a, a brief time of a silent prayer so that you may speak to God in whatever way you would. So with that, uh, I would just invite you to just simply say, let us pray. Try. 